How y'all feel out there? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Check this out. Did you know Jamel Bond? Yeah, you know, man, hey, it's funny you would ask me that about uh, that I know Jamel. I, kn I knew Jamel, and, you know, I don't know what happened to Jamel's mind, you know, where, where his faculty is, but there's someone, you know, that puts a camera in his face, and I don't know if they do it out of humor or out of meanness or just, you know, part of a conspiracy to distort this, uh, this true crip history, you know, and if that's their plot to do that, and they're using him as their uh, their patsy to do it, then you know, the real recognizes the real. And I always just say that, because when Donna Archie says that, you know, we know that this guy, if he was a crip, he would have been a baby crip. Because all you gotta do is check the school records. He went to Washington the same time I was at Washington. I left Washington in 75. He was going to Washington in 74. I introduced him to Took in 74. Me and Vance Knox, who's Eight Ball's uncle, was going to knock a hole in him. And I pushed up on him and I said, what set are you from? Anybody who ever been to Washington back in the day, there was a part of Washington that was called Skid Row. And that's where all the G's would hang out. And he was over there on Skid Row with a green, Vietnam bomber jacket on. And when we rode up, when I asked you what set you from, believe me, I'm coming because I'm asking you what set you from. And he told me that he came from Avalon. And that I, now once he said that, I knew that by then, Avalon was already Crips in 74. I knew that, I know my history. So, so now I know, you know, it's cool. So I'm, I'm telling Knox, you know, to chill. So Knox is chilling. The only reason that brought us his attention to us is because he was walking around the school like he was some Roman guy, you know, and he's not, you know. So we pushed up on him. And I didn't know if he had yokes, and it didn't make no difference because I had a yoke rec uh, equalizer. And at the time he had on this big old coat, so I don't know. So my next question to him when he said that, when he told me about, you know, that little small project that he was from, I said, do you think you could flex on Mouse? And he says, well, I don't know Mouse. I says, well, that's my brother. He says, I heard of him. I said, I said, do you think you could flex on Big Tookie? He says, I don't know. I said, well, pill out on me. I just came from camp. I'm fresh out of camp. It's 74. I said, pill out on me. So he peeled out. He flexed on me. I said, all right, I'm going to bring Tookie up here. So two, two days went by, I convinced Tookie. Hey, man, we're going to go to jail. Cutes, come on, man. If I go back up there, they're going to put me in jail. This and that. They told me don't come back up there. I said, come on, man. We're going to go in through the side gate. We're going to go over there by where the shops are at. We're going to pull up in there and bank up over there by, the, by over there, man. We're going to be all right. And, and the shop teacher is my friend. And we're like, I'm working on your car. Okay, it sounds good. Remember the Lincoln. So he's in the gold Lincoln. The Lincoln wasn't black until after, you know, it was gold first. So me and Tookie, we, we sitting in the Lincoln like our Roman chariot. So I got on my blue ace deuce, Took's bald head, it is shining, and we just going down Western two miles an hour, all the way to Washington. And I mean two miles an hour. There's cars behind us, and they seeing in that car who we are, and they not blowing their horn. They either, looks like a funeral procession, and the ones who can't take it, they blowing behind cars that's behind other cars. But the car behind us ain't blowing. So we get to Washington, we pull up in there, Took gets out, I go get Jamil and bring him over there. Jamil comes over there, Took jumps out the car, and now everybody know that the leader's there. So now we drawing a big ass crowd. And so Took, he gets out. And so he's talking. And this is how Took was. He didn't want a bunch of motherfuckers to come around when he's talking to somebody. He just wants you to stand back. So I let Took go up there with that dude. So we watch it. And now Took and him's talking, but he never comes out that green jacket. 
and took in a fucking slingshot. So Took comes back over there by me and he says, he's all right. He don't want to peel out. And I says, okay. He says, I got to get out of here. Are you going to stay here? Or are you coming back with me? I says, I'm going to stay here. I see, he says, okay, I'm out of here. So Took leaves. And now me and Jamel, we hang together a little while. So I get in trouble, go to juvenile hall. I come back, him and Took is like this. Jamel's in the hood, overtook South Buffett every day, every day. So all that shit about he show took how to lift weights and he the, the Samson system. That's all new shit. He wasn't even called Samson. I don't know who Samson, where he gets that from. His name was Jamel, and that's what his name was. So I mean, he creates this false following, and then he always try to jump behind the God cloth and all of this stuff. Hey, man, I believe in God, too. But I tell you one thing, when I was in the joint, I wasn't the kind of motherfuckers that would have one foot in the church and one foot on that main line. When I chose to believe in God, you could have believed the war was over. I didn't, I didn't do that to try to keep heat off my ass. I'm not going to come out here and talk shit about people and then all of a sudden now I'm holy roller. I'm not going to say all these bad things about people that shouldn't be said because you got this frost following and you creating this distorted belief system in other people's head from your distorted belief system in your mind. I'm going to tell you one thing, man. You did not start the Crips. You never fought Raymond Washington. How could you? If you go to Washington with me in 74, and you said you and Raymond fought in front of Fremont in 68, you couldn't have been nothing but 11 years old. Raymond's a teenager then. He would have beat you down, dude. He would have said, get out of my face. Now, what happened is they pushed up in your little raggedy-ass projects, and they made you turn. And that's what you did, because you had to turn, because the big fish always swallowed a small fish. And Jamil had a pretty small fish at the time, and Raymond had the big fish. And when he came on that west side, he had a big fish to swallow, and he made us turn. And we wasn't in disagreement, because we didn't do it like no little cowards. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't say, oh, we're going to join you guys because you're bigger than us and that. Nah, man. We had meetings and, 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 and had debates and, and everything. And then we joined. Melvin Hardy already lived on the east side. So he told us the dude was cool. That's when everybody joined. Ain't nobody just going to just join some shit just because you got some 20s or, or you got 18s or you this. Nah, man. People got to know what you do in the street. Who are you? What you about? Do I want to roll with you? That's how things are, man. So, Jamel, all I'm going to say to you is just quit lying. Quit trying to say you more than what you were. You was not a gangbanger, man. You did not gangbang. The gangbangers, we all knew who the gangbangers was. No brain. He's a gangbanger. Cute gangbanger. Mouse, I could say Mouse wasn't a gangbanger. But Mouse was a squabbler. But he wasn't a gangbanger. Rusty, I can say Rusty was a gangbanger. Chucky, I can't say Chucky was a gangbanger. Gary Lang, I can say Gary Lang was a gangbanger. I can't say Keith or Ricky Henderson were gangbangers. But they were squabblers. I can say that. I can say Pookie was a gangbanger. He gangbanged with me. I mean, now, what do you mean by gangbanger? Well, you guys need to know the true definition of gangbanger. I'm not talking about people who get in their car and they go shoot up shit. That's not a gangbanger. That's just some scary people who shoot them from a car window. Now, you can lay with them as a gangbanger if you want, but that's not gangbanging. Let's redefine gangbanging if you define it as that, because it's not that. Gangbanging is when you would mount a campaign and you would walk down the alleys of Western or Figueroa and you would go in another hood and when you turn out that alley, you in that hood and now you gangbanging. That's gangbanging. All that other shit, that's just scary people shooting from a car, man. You know? And that's what it is. You know? And I'm not scared of that either. If you walking around this world and you just a scary motherfucker and you want to be like, oh, 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 then people are going to see you scary. You know? Why are you gangbanging anyway? Why do you want to live this life if you don't got heart? Jamil, listen to what I'm telling you, man. If you want to be a Christian, the door is open. God says, knock, boom, the door is open, you come in. So I'm glad you're a Christian, but don't be lying about Crip history, man, because that provokes dudes that 
did gang bang, who's trying not to gang bang anymore. They got love for Tookie. They got love for Raymond Washington. They feel insulted by it. And then you got these other busters who probably are cops who type the little shit that they type telling you, keep going, Raymond. You carrying the banner this. Thing. I like that you talking about some of the stuff you talk about when you talk about kids. Don't carry guns to school. Don't shoot up to school. I like when you say that shit. That's real talk coming from you. But then you always flip out and then you start lying and making up some ridiculous shit, man. You don't got to do that, dude. You don't got to do that, Rain. I mean, uh, Jamil, you don't got to lie like that. What do you know about Big Jack? Man, Big Jack was not a gangbanger. Big Jack is a down dude. Big, I respect Big Jack. I grew up with Big Jack. Big Jack, Tookie brought Big Jack around. Big Jack, Big Jack ain't never did nothing to show me that he was a coward. He lived on the east side, you know. He lived over there where all those, all of those uh, telephone wires and towers are at. He lived right on that street over there in a little wooden house with his mom in there, you know. And me and Took would go over there and uh, we would go get Big Jack and we would bring him back on the west side. Then him and Big Jack became tighter. Then they started just, you know, buffing and living together in the house on 69. So I ain't got nothing against Big Jack. I've seen Big Jack's interview. I don't know why he did it with that white boy. I don't understand that shit. I mean, I don't, well, whatever he is, I don't understand why you do an interview outside of your race. Now, I understand, I understand that there's not, okay, if the guy is a Mexican, then it's okay. Because for the simple fact that we have had Mexican guys do interviews with us, Mexican guys that I know. I know the two Mexican guys that have interviewed that are Christians now, but they real Christians. They didn't wait while they were still in a part of what they were part of and do an interview and start talking bad about somebody and then act like they not and they is. They, they really Christian. So that's why they could walk around to this day. They didn't have to drop out of their uh, set to, to, you know, talk about what they're talking about. Everybody know those guys. Everybody know those guys are legit. I was in prison with both of those guys. Those guys are real people. They were the real deal. Those guys wasn't no joke. Can't nobody come to the street 30 years later, 20 years later, say, oh, that guy was this, that guy was that. Man, all I'm going to say about those two SA dudes, those dudes were there. That's all I'm going to say about them. Yeah, Tick probably didn't get to hear the apology, but did he hear, did he hear the insult? I don't know. Because every day in the joint, every week when they would have mail call before Duke Majin became the governor, we were writing each other. I'm in level four Folsom in the hole, took us in, in death row in San Quentin in the hole. We writing each other all the time. Every time the mailman would come, boom, my letter. Because when Jerry Brown was governor, we could write each other. There was no law that said people in prison couldn't write each other. That's my brother. I knew him since 1966. And you're going to say, you taught him how to lift weights? How could you teach him how to lift weights? And his daddy was a prize fighter. His daddy would have us all in the front yard doing all kind of crazy shit as far as calisthenics going, lifting weights. How could you say you taught Tookie how to lift weights? And when we would all go to LP, we had the cool-ass white coach that would show us how to lift weights. That was on Super Swole and wasn't racist and would share this knowledge with us. So how could you say something so ridiculous? How could you say you taught Tookie how to lift weights and Munson would show us how to lift weights? Now tell me that. Dude.